Within this video, I'm going to explore cesium ion, the web-based application, um, which is just cesium.com. Um, and then I'm going to have a look at the linkages between cesium ion and cesium for Unreal. Um, so first, I already had an account for this, but you can either sign in if you also have an account already made or create a new account. Um, on Cesium Ion, you can use a Google account, you can create new sign-in details um, just with your email and creating a password. Um, as Cesium Ion has a plugin for Unreal Engine, I used my Epic Games account details to log in. Um, so the layout of the page here has multiple different tabs. The stories here are ones that I've explored beforehand. So before you start to do that, you actually need to build up the um, like photogrammetry, the 3D tiles and the, the data sets that you want to explore within these stories. So I'm going to select the assets depot. Um, you can see the array of different options that you can choose here. Um, from surface models to 3D buildings, which is open street map data. Um, there's also photogrammetry and point cloud tile set options. Um, so I'm going to search for Melbourne because Melbourne was one of the benchmark um, sort of experiments that they did with cesium ion and they actually photographed at extremely high resolution the entire city um, of the CBD so there's really um, great quality images and data for Melbourne so I'm going to select the ones that I want to look at. Now normally it would have a little plus icon here which I can show you with another that I haven't already ha got, that I don't already have loaded into my assets. So Denver photogrammetry. And if I just want to add this here, and that's just loading. Okay, I agree to the terms and conditions. Then that will be now added. So you can see that I can't re-add it. It's added to my assets. So I'm going to head to my assets and here's all of the ones that I already have preloaded into my folder that I've been able to use or I've experimented with before. There's also the option to add data. So you can add some of your own data sets here which is really useful um, if you've done anything in Mapbox. Um, you would be able to show those files here and add the data. Um, here we can look at the list of different file types. So supported file data formats, you've got GeoJSON files which are quite popular, JPEGs, PNGs. Um, you can also work with cesium, of course. I just thought that I would show you that and also OBJ files. So if you go back to cesium, um, we want to create a new story. So new. Now um, we can title this Melbourne CBD and first of all it's going to show you the the world in the search bar up here I want to search for Melbourne and once I enter in those details it will automatically zoom in on the place in question and you just use your left click mouse to pan across your right click is to zoom in and out and your scrolling middle mouse button is to move around 
within the viewport. So you can see here that it's brought in cesium OpenStreetMap data for buildings and it's shown the BIM, uh, the Bing Maps aerial map which you can play around with the opacity um, but there's just an option there. Now for me to add in the assets that I have in my assets tab you just select here. Now I want to add in Melbourne photogrammetry so this is going to put the texture and overlay it over the buildings um, from the cesium open street map data that has already been imported so if I say load that's going to take just a little while to load that texture and that data within the model and also when you are moving around and panning around it will load as you're moving but if you are just patient you will find that all of the imagery will load in due course. So as this is loading you can see it's at a little offset. So this is the Eureka Tower and it, everything is seeing double right now. So what I need to do also, because the two different files are fighting within one another, if you switch off the buildings, you'll just be left with the photogrammetry. Okay, so if I just have the photogrammetry switched off, you can see that if I'm selecting the tops of these different buildings, I can actually delve into more information about that building the coordinates, the heights, um, the build, like the building color and material. That's not necessarily necessarily correct because only part of the building is has a gold finish to it, um, which we, you'll see now. If I switch on the photogrammetry and I'm going to switch off the OSM buildings. You can see it's this portion here which has some of the gold on it. So when you're oscillating around the viewport, every time you move, the buildings will have to load. See, you can see it there. Um, I also want to show you some other functions. So here's the Yarra. Now if you go down to this setting here, you can you can measure. So you can measure a component's distance and the angle it shows you there. Uh, polyline distance, if it was a walking route horizontal distance, vertical distance, so you can measure up the side of this building. Now this one's interesting, um, the height of terrain, so if you put, so that's 71 meters above sea level, 34, what else have we got, 0, 42, so that's a really interesting tool. Uh, this is the area, so if you wanted to measure a face of a building. Yep, so you've got that. And this is also a... Oh, you can get the point coordinates wherever you want to place this point. Got the latitude, longitude, height, and this slope, the gradient of the terrain. So I think that that's a really interesting tool. You can also add another asset. So Melbourne has some 
pedestrian sensor activity, which I'm going to add as well. Okay, so this says it's the sensor data from 2009. I'm going to find Melbourne again. And you can see all of these pedestrian sensor points across Melbourne. Yep, so it's the data from 2009. So that's a couple of really good, um, interesting things that you can utilize with this web-based application. So my next video will look at uh, utilizing cesium ion and the data that you can collect from this and inserting it into Unreal Engine.